A funny story but it's not even a funny story I don't even know how to <laughs> intro what I was gonna say but this isn't our first time at Rapid Bay this Rapid Bay was actually the very first campground we stayed at here on in South Australia we just didn't do any filming of it so we come back. good song rain on me it is definitely raining right now <laughs> Last time we were here, it was blue skies and sunny and stunning for the first what, day or two. And we got a prime, primo waterfront site. Today there's a whole lot more people here and it's raining. But I think Chris has said he can still spot a waterfront site. So we'll see how we go. But when you arrive at Rapid Bay, you actually have to call the caretaker, don't you? And let him know that you're here. Wee wee. Wee wee. Right, let's call him. Call the caretaker, but you have to book online first. It's really important. You can't just rock up here. Here's a little bit of information. Yes, you can bring the dog. And over here, a little bit more information. So they actually opened at 11, but because it's raining, they've let us come through and they're gonna come and do the paperwork later. Cause apparently they can't do paperwork when it's raining. So, and it's really actually, it's really starting to rain now. So when we did the boat tour, the big duck boat tour, it went right along on the water out there and right up close to that jetty. Oh, it's cold right now. Here we go. I want him to hurry up and park so I can get inside. <laughs> well, he stopped long enough for me to jump inside. I think he's gonna move a little bit further that way so Derek and Sue can fit over there. Yep. Repositioning. Nice views out the back window too. We are currently driving from Rapid Bay to Victor Harbour and there was a big sign that said toilets and we've turned in and it's actually a low cost camp. I'll show you. Fire station there. It says your $5 contribution will greatly help support these facilities. There's obviously the toilet down there. And that's where you can park up. What do you think about this little low cost camp? Oh, it's just a little. <laughs> a little low cost camp. Low cost camp, yeah. Like, it'll be nice. No it. idea it existed until you needed to go to the toilet, so yeah. good on you for that. No worries. Feels like winter out there though. How did it go from summer to winter, like overnight? Yeah, it's freezing. Yeah. Um, where are we? Heading to Victor. I guess we're right kind in the of, middle in of the, the middle. yeah, Florio Peninsula. Well, there's straight a sign across. there that says Victor Harbour straight ahead and Yankalilla to the left. They are off on a very exciting adventure to Victor Harbour You're to... You're chit-chatting a lot on the camera. I am chit-chatting a lot. I'd just like to fill you in on what we're doing. <laughs> We're gonna go and collect the mail, and this one here has got forty-six dollars to spend it super cheap, haven't you? I got a super cheap credit, forty-six bucks. <laughs> gonna go no on. idea what I'm gonna buy though, because nothing is. Yeah, everything is super cheap and super cheap. But... <laughs> How's that for a nice summer's day? <laughs> <laughs> Look at oh, that! Wow! How thick that is! <laughs> wow! Once again, Derek and Sue just banning it. There's Derek Just doing who? a little dance. Just who? Are you on YouTube? Yeah. <laughs> <It is not. laughs> I like I like your stickers, Derek. Show me, is it good? What was in your foot? A fishing hook? Yeah. Well that'll learn you. Look. I just stood on it. That'll learn you for wearing no shoes. Hey, don't, I don't want it, I don't, oh, put it in the bin, put it in the bin I don't yeah. want else okay. to steal it. All right. You can go keep dreaming that you had a boat. I'm going to have a boat shortly. <laughs> I didn't tell you, did I? 
All right, here we go. Great. Surprise, Miriam. Happy late birthday. Boat I bought myself a boat. With a new truck. <laughs> a new truck and a new boat. Happy birthday, Miriam. I've tried editing all day and I've been asked to come outside and I'm assuming it's because the world looks amazing right now. Yes, she is. It's not. It's because Sophie wants to say hello. Hello, darling. She saw you, babe. Hello, precious girl. Sophie's beautiful. I'm beautiful too. But the sunset, <coughs> pretty Me amazing. And Derek, we're... Me and Derek are beautiful. Look at us. So what have you guys been doing for the past four hours? Uh, business. We've been, we've, it's business. It's yeah. been around business. this way. Business. Oh. Right what? Still, I can see beautiful faces. Oh. Business, babe. It's, it's business. business. It's all, it's all it's, been business. It's all been negotiation, they, PR. They say you never do business over coffee. Yeah, exactly. You don't make the right decisions. No business happens over coffee in the morning. The right business happens over a few Well, you know Cheers, what? You know what? The, the biggest business we've ever we've ever done over beer. What? That. So, so we drag Miriam out the caravan. Morning one here at uh, Rapid Bay, and it looks a lot like last time we were here, yes. which means it's good <laughs> for this and not much else. Today is another day where it's cloudy, it's drizzling and it's 19 degrees. But we cannot wait any longer to show you around because we have to start making our way back to Victoria in the not too distant future. So today you're going to get to see what we've seen most of the time we've been in NSA. We've said the sunny days, the beautiful days have been few and far between. So reality check. I think we're going to do head back up towards Normanville and do some spots up there that we missed when we were in that area because we ran out of time and because someone ate too much food at our lunches and decided to blob instead of explore. And then I believe we're doing Deep Creek National Park. Anyway, Chris is having a chat with Derek next door. I'm finishing up inside and we are hitting the road. 9.30. We're off on a day of exploring. Don't know what we're going to explore, but we're definitely not going swimming because it's 18 degrees today. Made it yeah. out the gate, we pulled over and had a look at what we've got left to explore. Rock pools, Babe, we had beaches. The, we had a look at the gate in the car park out the front here. That was yeah, no, we had a look at our, our we didn't itinerary. Film it. We, want you we to had a look at the it. itinerary of what's <laughs> left to explore. And it's all beautiful beaches, rock pools, and things that I don't want to get in a rock pool when it's 19 degrees. And then it started raining. So we've decided to come back and just do more. We don't home. want to show you guys all these amazing places in crappy weather. I get it, and it is real, but. You'd way prefer to see it when it's sunny. Yeah, we're just going to use the time to do more behind the scenes. I've got some blog posts to write, I've got some videos to edit and that sort of stuff. So um, I'm going to get out of my jeans and put my trackies on <laughs> and get back to oh, work. We've got new neighbours <laughs> already. New neighbours already. Hey. <laughs> it's Saturday. Let me show you what's going on outside. Come on, let's have a look. Let's have a look. Let's have a look. What is this? The thing about the sky being blue today is that it's Saturday. So we aren't going to head off and film all the stuff we want to film because it's going to be really busy. So what a shame. I'm just going to hang out here and uh, enjoy this beach. I'm going to lay down my towel, I've got the bikini on, a bit of tanning going on before the clouds come back over tomorrow. But I think next week it's going to be pretty good as well. So we're going to head off and do some filming then for today chill out probably tomorrow as well we've got um a few more friends coming so we've got these guys here Derek and Sue over there Nathan and Martin are uh, I think coming in today so we're just going to hang out with our friends today enjoy good company and great weather and then next week we'll head off and um show you a bit more of this area so beach time for me bye before I do my sun baking on the beach I'm gonna do well I am doing a load of washing I'm gonna hang that out under the awning it'll dry pretty quickly Things about having so much water on board. That's my third load of washing since we've been here and we're gonna be here for six days, I think. Uh, and we have enough water on board to do as much washing as we want, pretty much, which is amazing, makes life so much easier. Ripper of a day. Everyone's enjoying the sunshine. We've been like playing Finska. Now we're doing a bit of a, I was gonna say a car shuffle, dancing. but we're actually having a bit of a dance. <laughs> I like it. Chris has got the best dance moves ever. Thanks, honey. Uh-huh. Thank you. And uh, we're making room for people who are just about to arrive. 
Who would it be? Who could it be? Who could Place it be? is booked out. Even more so now. Introducing our next fur neighbour, Theodore. How old is Theodore? Uh, 14 weeks. 14 weeks! I'm saving these guys a space. I'm gonna come right in their brand new van. Super exciting. Walk around the back campsite. So I've got Savage Life right here. Free to explore right here. Of course, this is us here. Over here, just men. We've just pulled into my ponga. Why are we in my ponga? Brew time. Brewery time, we are heading back to the Smiling Samoyed, but this time we've got an entire crew with us. So I've got my party shirt on, so I'm ready to party. I've got my party shoes on too. People ask me why I bring red heels in a caravan and it's for, for occasions like this. Chris has got his party shoes on too. Yep, thongs. Show you his party shoes. Hello! We've got a, a crew of humans and a crew of fur babies. Let's get in there. put this in context, we've been saying goodbye to these guys for about two hours now. Adventure day, magic day, where are we going? Deep yeah, Creek. Going, yeah, Deep Creek National no, Conservation Park. Oh, Deep Creek Conservation Park, I keep getting that wrong. Yeah. Now that is uh, basically in between Rapid Bay and Victor Harbour, all the central, it runs all the way down to the southern end of the of the peninsula where Blowhole Beach and all that is, so we'll go check that out There's today too. There's a lot too. to see there as well, so yeah. probably recommended two days um, just yeah. to see it all. We're gonna yeah. see what we can squeeze in today. The Tapanapa Falls, I think, is about two hours to get there. The Gundaloo Ridge Walk's a two-hour walk, but we're gonna ride it. Then there's the Blowhole Beach, then there's Raywood Nursery. So heaps of really cool places. There's tons, and there's actually a few yeah. camp spots and stuff in there too, but we'll yeah. show you all that as well. I don't think you can take caravans in there, but look, let's just go explore it all. There's a ton to see, and we better get cracking, eh? Yeah. Right out. Welcome to the park. 
4,500 hectares of coastal bushland and open forest. The largest remaining block of natural habitat on the Florio. So we are here. There's the Bundaloo Cottage. There's the mine. I'd really like to see that. Fairhole Beach down there. There's the tree campground. It's got the waterfall. The lookout. Homestead. Lots to see. You do need to um, pay some fees to get in here, so make sure you do that online. Ready to go? Um, I definitely rate it higher because it didn't take the full hour to walk here. Yeah, it's, I look at it more as in everyone sort of tends to stay on the beaches. And yes, they're amazing beaches, amazing coastline, but coming inland to these sort of places too, it's just, it's magnificent. And it's not really far inland. No. You can see the ocean from well, the walk in. Yeah, this Deep Creek National Park just runs along the ridges and you can see all the ocean and it runs all the way down to Blowhole Beach as well. <laughs> So we came to the T Junction before we went to Deep Creek Waterfall that way. I forgot Tapanapa was the actual falls, <laughs> which is this way. Chris is loving it because now he's got to hike more in his fancy shoes. But I don't think it's too far. I don't. That would explain why that was only 40 minutes. So we probably got maybe 20 minutes this way. Maybe. <laughs> Oops. Update we actually don't know where we're going because it seems that the Tapanapa Falls they're not here there's no walk to them from here so hopefully we haven't embarked on the seven hour walk that's pretty yeah. it's like there's a seat there nature is made for you that's the lookout you reckon probably okay well if it's not it, it now is this is as far as we're going I think that's it for hiking. Yep, we're done. For now anyway, because I am starving. Are you hungry? Yeah, I am pretty hungry. Coming back. All the stairs we went down. Now we've got to come back up. Are you okay? Yep. <laughs> Looks much less intimidating on the way down. I just went off, but my heart rate was 167. Come on. Made it. How are you feeling with the backpack on you? I'm okay. I only took it for half of the way back. So I'm fine. I didn't go up the stairs with it. And it took us an hour and 45 minutes. Decided to do lunch at Blowhole Beach. There are two ways you can get to Blowhole Beach. One, you can park at the Cobblers Hill car park and you can walk the 2Ks down. Apparently it's pretty steep. Or you can take the four wheel drive track down, which is also apparently pretty steep. So clearly we are taking the four wheel drive track down. beach and apparently well it appears not to be the best place for lunch because it is really windy so we're gonna get out have a quick look around and then find somewhere else to have lunch
We gonna go have some lunch? <laughs> I found some really shiny rock. Mm. It's really silver. Let's go get some lunch, yeah, eh? Let's <laughs> So Chris put in a request for something other than sausages and cheese for lunch. Mm -hmm. So we've got eggs and cheese. Are you happy with that? Mm -hmm. But it's not just normal cheese, it's halloumi. Information board. Bundaloo Ridge Walk. Gentle walk leads through the open, open eucalypt, eucalypt woodland. So and there. a magnificent yakka forest to arrive at the Gundaloo Ridge Lookout and Picnic Area. The highest point in the park, Lookout provides spectacular views of Aran Creek Valley and Backstairs Passage. Along the way you may spot mobs of kangaroos. And it is accessible. So wheelchairs, bikes, prams, e-bikes. GoPro's not going to do any justice, so. Oh, there's some kangaroos there too. Is that it? Um, well, you've got to go back now. We are on bikes and we've done 2.16 kilometres. It's only four kilometres. It's taken us 12 minutes. That's sensational, isn't it? Yeah. We are planning on doing Raywood Nursery, but I just Googled it in that one bit of reception that we had, and it's closed and doesn't open till Thursday. So, no Raywood Nursery for us. Today's adventures ended rather abruptly with a Google search telling us that the Raywood Nursery was closed. So we came back to Rapid Bay, hung out there. Had a beautiful sunset. Yeah, we did. I can't even see you over there. You're in the shade and I'm in the sunlight. Um, today we're heading back to Deep Creek National Park. We're going to do the Talisker Mine Ruins, check them out. And then, where are we headed? Just beaches. Beaches and rock pools and beaches all the things we missed before, hey? For the day, yes. And maybe get some snorkeling in. I just don't know. Uh, we'll see. We'll see. See how the day pans out. You're fully picking your nose. <laughs> no, I'm trying to draw. Yep. Riveting day we're going to have, aren't we? It's going to yep. be amazing. We're starting with the Talisker Mine Trail here, which is a, um, what do you call it? A mine trail. No, it <laughs> it tells you all about the history of the, the Cornish families that were here. This was the largest silver lead mine in all of South Australia. So it's, you can either do the whole trail and read all the signs, which you're not going to want to do because you should see he's standing back like this. He's very bored. Wait, can you hurry up? Or you can just go straight to the interesting stuff. So I have a feeling that he's going to want to go straight to the interesting stuff. So right. anyway, okay. that's what we're going to do. Talisker, silver lead mine hike, an hour and a half return, three kilometers. I don't think that we are doing that. Well, this is a sign you have to read because the cottage doesn't exist anymore. So if you go looking for- We could build a house like that. Honey, with our budget? What do you think? Yeah, probably. Oh. So this is a picture of a miner's cottage that once stood nearby. So, see? The Cornish brought with them their traditional mining methods and social customs. 35 miners were employed under the management of Captain this Price. The, well, the path has opened up and you look confused. I'm just looking where to take a photo, is that alright? Uh, well, I'm going to go over here and see what this is. They've fenced it off so we can't fall in. So thanks for that, guys. Looks a bit like that. You can still see bits of wood protruding. You can kind of see stuff lying around everywhere over this side. So if we come to this board first, it would have told us that where we were before was the engine house. And this here is the main shaft. And it says this shaft was the focal point of the mine. And unlike the others, it was vertical for easier haulage and pumping and lined with local timber. But collapse of this lining 
has now blocked the shaft, so you can't see any further down. Well, it's pretty deep already. 132 metres deep with eight levels. Are you serious? Yeah. And the mine was kept dry below the 40 metre level by a steam-powered Cornish pump. Wow. The steam engine was housed in an iron building. The adjacent boilers were connected to an underground flue running up the hill. It's a serious place, eh? Hey? Mine water was pumped up the shaft through a main water, through a water main and ran via a wooden trough to the reservoir behind the crusher house. So mm. it kind of all makes sense when you look here. That is super deep. Yeah. So yeah. the manager's house up there, so they obviously cleared the tree so he could keep an eye on what's going on. There's a blacksmith over there. The store's up there. So it's kind of dotted all over the place. Here it gets exciting because we get to spin around and there's heaps of stuff. The brick kiln. What do they do in the kiln? Burnt bricks. Ah, uh, okay, they don't burn them, they cook them. Yeah, they cook them, that's right. I don't know what the correct To make them all hard and dry. Harden the bricks, dry them out. Yeah. They dry them out. And... Look at this. It adds a pop of colour. Absolute scumbags who graffiti stuff like this. Yeah, this is... Not... Especially, you know, such significance and history and... Historically significant things need yeah. not be graffiti. No. Anyway, that's actually pretty cool. Look at this. What is this thing? I don't Here we know go. It. Ore was roasted in the furnace to remove sulfur and arsenic prior to smelting. The crushing house. Or I guess they crushed stuff. And it's fenced off because it's fragile and you can't go in there. Look at the size of those beams in there. Can you imagine how difficult it would have been back in the day to build these things? No. You know, they would have had no cranes to come down or delivery trucks with cranes, you know, on the back of them. It would. To drop them on the ground and move them around and... Oh, man. It's just... Man labour, hand labour, what yeah. do you call it? Manual labour. Manual labour would have been just so intense back in those days. And then we get tradies these days who still whinge about going to work, you know, and having to lift a few sheets of gyp rock or... Not that I'm going to win because I haven't done it, but... <laughs> but I've been a tradie myself. So you there found an information the board. Ore treatment plant. But what blows me away is, look at that, there's no bush. But look up here. Yeah, there's, if they've cleared look. it, obviously. But look up there. Yeah. Well, remember when we were at the Stamper in Tassie? Mm. How they showed it was fully cleared and when we were there, you could hardly even yeah. see the Stamper. So there's a big crusher house there, so there was a big roof out here. Those are the key buildings, ruins, whatever, that we're going to be looking at today. And I think now Chris is really keen to go check out some beaches. The miners had a bit of a hike home after their day at work. Arrows snuck Chris into doing the actual loop. Sneaky, sneaky arrows. I think we've just actually gone past them. I think that might have been... The car? <laughs> that must have been where those dugouts were. We totally missed the miners' cottages. Well, that's where they would have been, where the cutouts are, I guess. Yes. Makes sense, doesn't it? Anyway, you successfully completed the loop, yeah. I think, or part of it anyway. Yeah. Well done. Well done. There we are, back at the car. Something definitely to come and see when you're in Deep Creek yeah, Conservation Park. It doesn't take long. Pretty quickly, and it just shows you, you know, how the old buggers used to do it, how tough they had it in their life. I guess it's history, yeah. so let's go. He literally stopped in the middle of the road, lucky no one was there, and said, do you want to go for a walk down there? And I said yes and jumped out. Oh, I found some signs. Another hastened trail. They seem to be everywhere. This one gives you a little bit of info about a short hike along the coast from here to Fishery Beach. And this one is a huge hike that's 70 kilometres and takes four to five days from here, Cape Jervis, um, to Victor Harbour. And what we've got going on down here is the ferry to KI is loading up and is just about to take off by the looks of it. It's a great idea when you visit a place to not see everything and to leave a few things so that you have to come back. And one of those few things for us is KI. Sadly, we don't have enough time to go over there on this trip, um, but we are definitely will be coming back and that is what's going to be on our itinerary next time we come back to SA. Not sure how long I've got. Definitely not five hours one way. 
So I don't have 10 hours, but I'm going to wander over this way just for a little bit and see what I can see. And the really short walk, like not even 30 seconds, there's the ferry there. And I've come across this, nature play at Cape Jervis, tic-tac-toe. And down there, you have a huge tic-tac-toe board with really cool rocks that have got like bugs painted on them. And in here, it says, please determine magnifying glass and tray. So I can go for a little explore and see what bugs I can find around here. So bug spotting, what you might see in spring, summer, autumn and winter. This is so cool. How exciting it must be to be sitting on that ferry right now listening to your welcome aboard message. They didn't do very well. All the bugs that I found are flying around and really don't want to be caught and put under a microscope, I mean a magnifying glass. And the rest of them are like ants. So I don't really want to see an ant under there. Oh, there's a, see it's a bee. I'm not going to put that under here. Anyway, there are bugs to be found, but I don't have the patience of a child to find them to look under a magnifying glass. Bye. onto that beautiful beach but that would require airing down oh yeah I just I couldn't don't be bothered think really can be bothered doing right now no, it's only a small little beach so I'll flip the drone up so you can have a look at it though if we had time to it's sit and gorgeous on enjoy it. it and have like lunch there or something that'd yeah. be great but we have to keep moving on so do you yeah. know the name of this beach uh I can't remember Cape Jervis Beach I did know it but it no says, it also says they're on Hema uh, I don't think it's called Cape Jervis Beach. Look, Cape Jervis Beach. Yeah, I'm looking at that, but I don't think it's called Cape Jervis oh. Beach. Well, we don't know what it's called, but it's that, and it's beautiful. out this time or you're gonna actually do it I'll tell you something I have a major phobia of being in the water where there are sharks how are you looking there I think ridiculous you look like a groper oh she's over little does she realize that I'm not behind her she's clearly on her own and she's gone that's a little distraction Wait, I'm, with you. Well, I'm not with you no <laughs> You could not get here any quicker. <laughs> <laughs>